Today I'm talking about uh, copyright claims on your YouTube channel or rather how to avoid them uh, by having uh, the rights to use any music or sound effects, yes sound effects too, <laughs> that you're using uh, either on your YouTube channel or in fact this goes for uh, all of your other social platforms or wherever you else, uh, wherever else you may be using uh, music. Now uh, I'm, this is basically, let me just get to the chase, <laughs> this is all about epidemic sound, that is what I'm using to uh, basically as the service to provide uh, all of the extensive music catalogue that you'll notice in my videos. Basically my intro music and outro music and in fact I've actually dropped the intro music but I still have uh, music on the uh, countdown timer for my uh, uh, live streams, my regular weekly live streams uh, and uh, it basically just means that I don't have to worry about uh, any copyright strikes uh, that may arise or at least copyright claims and that is a, a crucial difference there actually because there is a difference between a copyright strike and a copyright claim uh, but both of them do involve uh, some level of work on your part to resolve them. Uh, now when I first started my channel I have, have been a long-term Adobe uh, stock subscriber and if I just come over to Adobe stock for a moment and I'll show you that uh, you can actually get audio from Adobe stock. And uh, hey Rich great to see you here and uh, hang on a minute drum roll please this is the first time I'm actually using my Stream Deck pedal in anger to remove your comment. <laughs> not, 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 not that I'm angry about your comment, you know what I mean, <laughs> actually using my Stream Deck. I can put it back up again just like that. Uh, got my Stream Deck finally, Stream Deck pedal finally after months of waiting for uh, them to get on the bandwagon in Thailand here. So uh, there we go, that is uh, that little bit out of the way. <laughs> I've used it for the first time officially on a live stream. Uh, so yeah, over in Adobe Stock though, uh, I digress obviously, uh, there is in here audio and if you come over to the, uh, the more at the top here, so you've got obviously photos, vectors, videos and all that sort of stuff but in the more you also have audio and I thought I'd cottoned on to a bit of a, uh, a saving for myself because if you look down in the audio section there's lots of uh, different uh, music and things like that in here but also you'll notice high quality stock audio from our partners and so there is actually epidemic as part of Adobe stock you also do get epidemic sound uh, as, uh, as part of that. There is a bit of a uh, caveat with this though you don't really get sort of access to the uh, the full epidemic sound uh website interface it's basically just access to the library but therein lies the issue because in order to use this in your videos basically you have to enter the license details for each and every video and I found that out very quickly <laughs> because I kept getting these uh, copyright uh, copyright claims on my videos even though I had sort of obviously downloaded it legitimately through um, uh, Adobe stock um, but then I basically needed to go in and put the license code in for every video and that's not a case of just including it in the description or something like that. You have to go through the process of getting the claim, going and disputing the claim, entering your details and all of that. So it's a bit of a, uh, a bit of a palaver, should we say. <laughs> so I figured that it was actually just a lot simpler in terms of uh, time cost to just sign up for Epidemic. As you'll see in a moment, it's not uh, a vastly expensive service. Uh, in fact, it's very reasonable for the amount of time that it saves with all of this sort of, uh, these sort of shenanigans. So what exactly does it look like though when you do get a copyright claim? Well, fortunately, here's one I prepared earlier <laughs> because uh, I have had a recent copyright claim on my video, not through the music that I've been using through Epidemic obviously. Uh, the beauty of Epidemic is you just basically whitelist all of your channels, we'll see that in a moment, uh, and then you're free to use it wherever. It was actually for the video, the live stream that I did uh, last week which was on Songkran, the Thai uh, New Year, uh, and so I played a little bit of a video and so I have, a, have had a copyright claim against that particular video because it's uh, basically the tourist authority of Thailand it's their video with their music and everything like that in the background so uh, it didn't actually affect the channel but I thought I should just uh, show you what a copyright claim looks like uh, here <laughs> do you know it used to be for me that this area up in the top of my channel was always full of nice little things like uh, haven't you done well or your channel is improving whereas now I've got this big red uh, bar here for a channel violation that was for the video I made about Downy the application you can use to download YouTube videos YouTube surprisingly unsurprisingly I should say uh, didn't like that video and so took it down so I had a, a, an active community guideline strike warning <laughs> and then over here now I've got another notification which is uh, a video has received a copyright claim. I'm feeling very naughty these days <laughs> with these, these notifications up here every time. But if I uh, show you what this looks like, so when you get a copyright claim, uh, sometimes depending on the copyright owner they may just insist that the video is taken down uh, but in other cases uh, that is not the case. So here you can see that um, this particular video 
<laughs> I am. I'm going. Ro I'm going rogue. <laughs> uh, I, I, I was trying to escape from my bad boy image as well. There you go. Never mind. <laughs> um, so here you've got uh, the information about it. Whoops, lazy. I've uh, just switched over to the uh, wrong window. There we go. Um, so here you can see. <laughs> uh, here you can see the. Um, uh, it says that uh, I've had a copyright claim, and this is uh, against this particular video. And as I say, it's that uh, live stream that I did about the. Uh, Thai New Year, the Songkran Thai New Year. And so what it says is your channel impact has not been affected. So it says the content ID claim on your video uh, doesn't affect your channel. So it's not like a copyright strike as such. It's just uh, that they've uh, put in a claim because of the uh, use of some element. And by the way, it does actually tell you here, you can see uh, down here, it will tell you the exact spot where it was. So you can actually go and play the video to see exactly what the uh, copyright claim was about. Uh, the visibility, so it's saying that this is still public, so everyone can still see the video. It hasn't affected that, um, but it is ineligible for monetization. Uh, I'm quite happy about that, <laughs> or at least I'm not bothered about that. Uh, I'm sure it wasn't going to be one of my major hits <laughs> in terms of videos. Um, but basically, any uh, it, the video will still be running ads and stuff like that, but the, it, basically the copyright owner will be uh, receiving any revenue that comes from that for that particular uh, video. So... Um, uh, that is it. It can tell you here exactly the time where the content is found. So it was this video about, uh, as I say, Thai New Year. You can just play it from here. There you go. <laughs> so uh, that was it. A little bit of uh, Thai music in the background and uh, the Thai Tourism Authority, which I guess is who that is, uh, talking about the um, uh, talking about Songkran. Anyway, so that is what a copyright uh, claim looks like. Now, what you can actually do here is if you wanted to, you can come down here and you can say either I want to trim out the segment. So you can just simply remove that little part of the video if you want, um, or you can uh, dispute it. Now, if you dispute it, it's going to ask you to go through a series of steps. I'm not actually going to do this because I certainly don't want to dispute this claim. Um, but uh, basically, it will ask you, um, first of all, you know, did you have permission to use the music? Do you have the rights to use it? Is it uh, do you have the right to use it in, uh, in videos and things like that? So you'll answer a series of questions. Uh, and then it will take you on to a step where if you do have a license, then you can actually add in the uh, the license details and all of that kind of thing. Uh, but there is work involved in doing it. So uh, coming back to my little tale <laughs> of uh, using Adobe stock, uh, when I was using my Epidemic uh, sound tracks, what I would notice was if I come into my content, uh, that particular one was over in my live streams. And so somewhere down here, uh, there it is. It's this one here. I would have a copyright claim and then I'd have to go to see details. You can access it from here. This is ex the exact same details we've just looked at. Um, but basically, I'd have a copyright claim for every single video I was uploading. So uh, long story short, uh, in fact, I've already made it quite long, haven't I? <laughs> um, but uh, basically, yeah, going through this process every time, disputing these things and putting in my license details was pretty much a non-starter. So uh, Epidemic Sound to the rescue. <laughs> I'll leave a link to it in the description as well. But uh, I often put this up on the screen uh, during my other live streams. So uh, Epidemic Sound is the place that I get all of my uh, royalty-free music, or rather copyright-free music, uh, that uh, I'm able to use in all of my uh, social media platforms, my YouTube channel, Facebook, TikTok, all of those kind of places. So you can get your free trial at takeonetech.io slash epidemic. So I've talked about this at length before in various other streams or mentioned it before. Um, but one thing I haven't really done is actually gone through the process of showing exactly what is involved uh, in Epidemic Sound once you actually sign up. And so I did have a question from somebody uh, actually who was on my uh, Ecamm Live Masterclass, <laughs> somewhere here, ecamlivemasterclass.com. Uh, and they were asking about Epidemic and how it works and what the sort of process is. Uh, so that is what we're going to uh, have a look at now. So I'll come over to uh, my browser again and I'll just come into Epidemic Sound. So once you actually sign up, uh, this is basically the uh, the page that you will end up in when you are logged in. And the first thing you're going to want to do is basically go and uh, whitelist all of your channels. So if I go into the uh, this section, if I go into me, and what I need to do is, uh, let me just have a quick look here before I go into this. I just need to double check that there is nothing uh, sensitive in here. No, I don't think there is. 
Um, so basically in the uh, subscription, it's going to have the uh, subscription that you're on, but this is the crucial part here. It's where you're going to add in your um, uh, channels. So you can basically have, there are different uh, pricing plans, but on the, uh, in fact, let me just look at the pricing plans here to show you. Uh, there is personal, commercial or enterprise. So with personal, you've got unlimited downloads, so you've got access to the whole catalog. Uh, thousands of tracks, thousands of sound effects. It's uh, at the moment at $12 a month here for the personal plan. Uh, you've got unlimited, unlimited downloads. You can use it on YouTube, Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, Twitch, and also in your podcast. And you can also monetize on one channel per platform. So basically, you're allowed to use it on you know, one YouTube channel. So if you are, you know, creating multiple different channels, uh, then you would need a separate epidemic sound for each of those. So at one point I was considering doing my shorts on a separate uh, YouTube channel and I did just check and indeed, even though that would have been sort of take one tech under the same sort of brand uh, as it were, then you would still need a separate license for that. Uh, with the commercial license, on the other hand, um, you can also use it on all of those uh, platforms, of course, uh, but then you can also use it for... Um, uh, websites as well and you can also publish content for for, uh, for your clients and business so uh, you can actually do client work where you're using music as well uh, and you can also use them in digital ads so if you're doing any Facebook ads or things like that then you can use the epidemic library in your marketing campaigns as well uh, enterprise is basically uh, multiple users things like that and you can also use them on TV shows and ads and stuff like that so I haven't actually inquired about the cost of that not something that I'm specifically interested in um, but there, I mean it's pretty reasonable for the personal and the commercial at uh, $12 a month that is the yearly I should say so annual is either $15 a month or basically $50 a month and so when you uh, go in yeah as I say you will need to just basically go and uh, add in all of your different channels so you can just whitelist your YouTube Instagram Twitch uh, TikTok uh, a podcast RSS feed so if you've got a podcast you can add that in there and then also Facebook now once you've done this you only do this once you never have to worry about those copyright claims again it just basically is it's this there it can check and if it sees that you're using music on those platforms then for those channels you won't have any uh, any issues there so once you have uh, actually uh, set that all up then uh, when you come into epidemic you'll basically land on a page which looks a little bit like this so it'll have some featured so it'll say for your um, channel and it's basically looking at the tracks that you've already used on your channel and will or channels I should say and will um, uh, basically pick out some things that it thinks are relevant um, more of what you like is just going to be based on different things that you've browsed for uh, you can it's going to give you basically five things here and you just click on any one of them and it will play a bit jittery that is <laughs> let me try this one that's a bit uh, stuttery actually. Uh, I don't know what that is. It wasn't doing that before. Maybe something to do with me streaming at the same time. Uh, let me just uh, cancel this. But that's basically just five recommended tracks based on your channel and five based on your recent search history, I guess. You can always refresh that to give you another five. Uh, but the way I guess most people are going to use this is actually just do this search. There is a featured playlist and themes down at the bottom, uh, some staff picks and things like that as well, uh, and uh, new releases. So these are actually albums. So all of the artists here are making music specifically for epidemic if you want chart hits <laughs> things that you may have heard on the radio and things like that uh, then there is another service called licked which is l-a-c-k-d.com and uh, there you can actually license you know sort of uh, as i say publicly available music basically the artists that create uh, tracks for epidemic create music for epidemic are um doing it on the basis that their music is then only going to be available there and Epidemic owns the rights to that music as well. So they obviously get paid out from it uh, from whatever financial model they've got arranged, but uh, that is the, the point of it. So you will find that there are artists though that are on Epidemic who you will sort of follow and you'll get to know their style and their, their um, uh, music. And so they do create albums that are then available on Epidemic as well. So this is just basically the front page, but you can also then search by genre, uh, you can search by mood, themes, all sorts of different things, or as I say, just by albums. Uh, so if we come into genres, then if you wanted, uh, you can see some various different ones here. There's also an A to Z. So they've got some sort of high level ones here, uh, beats, electronica and dance, hip hop uh, and so on. Uh, but then if you come down here, then you'll find that that's sort of broken out a little bit more. So uh, different types of hip hop, different types of classical and so on. Uh, and you can just basically go and do a little search that way. 
You can also uh, filter as well, he says, uh, pressing the wrong button. <laughs> you can also filter. So if I just come into the very first one here, uh, you can also uh, use this little filtering function just over the top here. And then you can filter by the, the sort of mood of the music. So we've picked the genre, but you'll notice here with the genre, we've got lots of different types. So hopeful and laid back, hopeful and laid back, lots of hopeful and laid back <laughs> music in this genre um, and then happy and quirky and so on. So basically you can just then go and add in, you know, different ones of these that you want to search for uh, and it will basically just filter them that way. You can also search by the duration as well. So if you're looking for music that is a specific length, uh, then you can also search by the duration and this is just a simple two sliders. So if you want like countdown music or something like that for your uh, live stream countdown perhaps, uh, then you could search for something between a certain length if you wanted to get the full track in. Uh, you can also search by speed as well. So if you want a particular uh, BPM or within a certain range, then you can uh, filter by that as well. I've managed to filter out all of the results <laughs> doing that that I've just done there. Um, but that is uh, how you can uh, basically filter for things. Uh, there's also tags as well. So uh, just um, slightly different than the, uh, the moods, but uh, another uh, different way to uh, search for things there as well. Once you have uh, found something though that is of interest, in fact this is going to be quite random now, <laughs> but let me just play this top one here. Yeah, very random, but let's just assume that that was the perfect track for me to find. I don't know if it's breaking up for you, by the way, but it's definitely something to do with uh, me streaming at the same time. Um, you can do a couple of things here. So you can either copy the link. So if you want to uh, just copy it, maybe you want to share it with somebody else who is also using Epidemic, you can do that. Uh, you can add it to a playlist as well. So I'll be coming on to playlists and projects in a moment, but if you want to add this into a playlist, uh, you can add it in. If there is not a playlist here, you can create one. So I'm just going to create a new playlist like that. Uh, so what you might want to do is, you know, if you've got background music or things like that going on uh, in your live streams, for example, or in your videos, you may just want to create a playlist in here uh, as you're sort of going through uh, and then you can just download them all in, uh, in one go or even actually play them from within here. You've also got a couple of options. So this is telling me here as I go through the uh, tracks, you can see that this one's now got a tick showing me that it is already in a playlist. You can also like it as well. So if you want to uh, like a particular track, you can do that and it will add it to a liked uh, videos, uh, a liked tracks playlist. Uh, and then here you can also do find similar. So if you found something that's quite, uh, you know, suits the, uh, the the use case that you've got and you just want to find something similar, uh, then uh, that's obviously what the find similar function does. Uh, and finally, you can download. Now, when you download it, you've got two options. You can either download the full mix, which is basically going to be just the track exactly as it is, um, but you can also download all stems. Now, with the stems, basically what that's going to do is give you a series of different tracks so that you can actually choose. You may just want sort of the, uh, the base line you may want the uh, the vocals or something like that and it will actually download those all as individual files so then you can just use the bits that you want so that's quite a, a, a nice feature I'm sure if you are that way inclined <laughs> personally I tend to just use the uh, the full mix but I can see how somebody who's probably a little bit more musically talented than I am may want to actually just you know dig in and use different parts of the track instead um, so that is uh, what we've got there. You've also got those same controls there in terms of adding to the playlist and all that. That is all down at the bottom as well. Uh, I mean, I've played it from here, so you'll notice if I do play a track, uh, then basically we, you can see the sort of waveform down at the bottom down here. And then you can also just sort of skip forward through that as well, uh, making sure that you're not cutting it off the bottom of the uh, screen. There we go. <laughs> you can also adjust the uh, the volume. Uh, you can see here the stems. So it will actually show you all the different stems that I was just talking about. So you can either have the full mix, uh, you can just play back the melody, instrument stem, the bass, the drums, uh, 20 second cut down, 30 seconds. So it will actually, that's a, just a sort of shorter version of it. Um, so definitely just have a play around there and see. These may be different for each track, by the way. It's not always gonna be exactly the same. It depends what the artist has created and obviously what kind of music it is or what is involved in the, the track. But uh, these are where you can find out what the different stems are. And uh, so for example, if you have got a track which has got vocals and you really like the track, but you don't want the vocal part, then you may want to just go and select all except the vocals. For example, that might be something that you could, uh, you could do there. 
Uh, still getting used to the pressure sensitivity on my pedals. That's why I keep flicking back and forth. <laughs> um, so uh, there is, uh, and then there's the download thing as well and the play. So that is basically how you would go about actually looking for a track. Uh, they've got exactly the same sort of functionality for sound effects as well. So that was music we're just looking at. Uh, for sound effects, all sorts of different sound effects here, thousands of them, uh, maybe better to do a an actual search for this but you can see how they are sort of grouped so you've got a whole series of uh, four different categories of aircraft sounds <laughs> which is pleasing to me as an aircraft enthusiast so we've got all these different uh, helicopter sounds I'm not sure how I'd fix those into uh, fit those into my uh, live streams but there you go uh, lots of different things you know wishes all sorts. I mean, you could do a full-on, uh, you know, radio show, radio uh, drama <laughs> with all of the kinds of uh, different things that you've got in here uh, for, you know, all kinds of sound effects that you may want to use. Again, I'm not really big on the sound effects in my live streams. Uh, it doesn't seem quite appropriate, to be honest, but there you go. Uh, so that is the sound effects. And as I, as I say, you can sort of search by the sort of uh, featured sound effects but then also by the categories and for all of these things you can also just do a search up here as well uh, now what you can do though if i come over into your uh, my settings rather if i come into playlists over here this is the part that i mentioned before um so at the moment i haven't really used playlists to be honest because i use limited music actually in my uh, in my videos in case you hadn't noticed so it's basically as i say just a countdown music and my outro music um and but if you were doing larger projects or you wanted to have playlists of background music or you were doing client work as well where you wanted to have different projects that you were doing uh, or ad campaigns or things like that uh, then you may want to do have a little bit more sort of curation and organization of your uh, tracks that you've got in uh, in epidemic so the first thing you can do is either create a playlist so this is uh, just to be clear we're up in the me section once you're logged in and then we are in the playlist section and you can either create a playlist or you can create a project so a playlist uh, you can see this new playlist that is the one that we uh, just created uh, a moment ago uh, and you can see how it's got one track in but basically you can just add in lots of uh, other tracks and it will suggest tracks based on the track that's in there so let's just say i wanted to go and add a few i can just literally come and click on add and that will add those uh, tracks there if you want to put any notes associated with a particular track what it might be used for you know if you're going to have a playlist list where you're going to use specific tracks for, spe for specific things uh, then it's quite handy to be able to add in the notes here and uh, the actual playlist itself you can change the name of it so we can rename that uh, whatever we want I will not bother doing that at the moment <laughs> but then you can also uh, just share it or delete it so if you have created a playlist uh, for a project or something like that then you can always share it out that way as well you can also create a project though so a project uh, if I give this a new project <laughs> example project just like that so now you can see that down on the uh, this side down here we've got this example project uh, and you can create a playlist in there so again if you've got a particular project you're working on where you need multiple different playlists then you can create those like that incidentally when you create a new playlist it does actually ask you where you want to do it so this is uh, so let's say playlist two and then you can also add it to a project so if we add it into this example project uh, then you can see that now it has added it underneath there with the uh, the playlists being in sort of lowercase uh, and the uh, the projects all being in uppercase so that is uh, just a little overview really of uh, Epidemic and there is a, uh, a referral program obviously with most of these things so uh, you can definitely use my referral link by all means <laughs> that is takeonetech.io slash Epidemic and uh, as I say there's no, uh, no specific benefit to you except that warm fuzzy feeling inside that you get from knowing that you've helped out one of your <laughs> one of your favorite creators uh, I'm jumping to some conclusions there um, but uh, yeah you can find out about their um, referral program as well by going into the community uh, so if you are signed up then uh, obviously you can refer people yourself there it certainly has uh, saved me a lot of hassle as i say with uh, messing around with entering those copyright claims and things like that uh, tiktok is now part of epidemic or rather you can whitelist your tiktok account when i first started with epidemic that wasn't the case and so there was one occasion where i did get a copyright claim on one of my tiktok videos but uh, they have uh, now corrected that <laughs> because now you just whitelist your tiktok account as well 
that's all I'm covering for today, but uh, I'll be back tomorrow with some other uh, content creation related uh, videos. <laughs> so that's all for me today. I'll leave a link to some other uh, related videos to do with uh, building YouTube channels and stuff like that for those watching on the replay over on the right hand side. And until tomorrow, have a great day.